Ladies, what's up? All right, let's talk about it. How much protein do we need to be eating to be fit and super strong, right? This has been a hot topic in the Facebook group, Macro Tracking and Weightlifting for Women. And as promised, I told you ladies that I would dig into the research because um, I keep hearing some people in the group saying uh, one gram of protein per pound of body fat. And I keep saying that's outdated research. Stop telling ladies that. And they're like, what are you talking about? So it's been this huge debate. And so I'm like, okay, let me take a step back. Let me dig into the research and let's have a great discussion about it. So that's what I've done. And I chose uh, three different research uh, articles to share today. There are more, um, but really I wanted to hone in on um, who was the article speaking to, who was it talking about, and who was it speaking to, and like what was the purpose of it. So there were, there were a lot of research um, articles about uh, cancer patients, about just all different types of people. And so the ones I looked for were us, right? Uh, women who are aging, women who are postmenopause, women who are weightlifting and want to grow muscle mass. So that is really, and it, it wasn't just women, it was men and women. Um, well, actually two of them was men and women. One of them was just women. So that th these are the articles that I really honed in on. Now, um, I will post these slides so you have access to them. I know one of you was really adamant about sharing these research articles with a dietitian or someone you were working with, so you will have access to these slides, okay? So these are the references that I um, chose for this review. Now, a few reminders, okay? First reminder, if your research is more than five years old, you need to find newer research. The field advances so fast. And you guys, what we're learning today might be different in a year, two years, three years, five years, right? And so this is not the end all be all. This is where we are right now in the industry. So just keep that in mind. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, these are all peer reviewed articles. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. Um, I'm like, did I check that first one? But I'm pretty sure I did. So these are all peer reviewed articles, which means they are way more accurate than non peer reviewed articles. They go through a lot more extensive process of being deemed as accurate research. Okay. If you're looking at research that's not peer reviewed, you can't really trust it, honestly. So these are the articles, again, I've chosen for today. And again, you will have access to these slides. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about this. <laughs> Great. Okay. So I'm going to make this larger so I can see it better. If you have comments or questions, let me know. So this uh, research study, and if you know the name, Brad Schoenfeld, he's huge in our industry. So moderate and higher protein intakes promote superior body recomp in older women performing resistance training. Now, I want you to notice that they indicated high protein at one gram per kilogram body mass. One gram. All of you saying that you should have at least one pound per, uh, one gram per pound, that's 2.2 grams. That's over double what they're saying is high protein, okay? They're saying moderate is 0.77 to one and low protein is less than 0.77. So this is talking about untrained postmenopausal women, okay? So the point of me showing this is current recommendations for older women who want superior body recomposition is an intake of 1.4, to two grams of protein per kilogram body mass. This is what I keep saying, but I actually like to do 1.6 to 2.0 personally. I'll rarely do 1.4. The only time I'll do 1.4 grams of protein per kilo body mass is if she has a ton of weight to lose and it's just excessive protein because of her body mass. And so I'll do 1.4, but typically I like to do 1.8, but I'll go 1.6 to 2.0. Okay, so here's one of them. I'll go into more detail, but this was just, I wanted you to show this one as the current recommendations. I think this one was 2020, um, 1 1.4 to 2 grams. This was the same research study. We're going to talk about this one for a minute because I love this one because this one is debunking all of you who are in the super old research saying you can't lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. There's loads of research 
clearly identifying that is not the case. And it actually talked about it here. So I was like, perfect. I'll kill two birds with one stone. Okay, so according to the first law of thermodynamics, achieving a chronic negative energy balance, so being in a deficit, is necessary to reduce body fat levels. In contrast, being in a surplus, or some people say a bulk, is generally recommended for building muscle. However, body recomp has, and for those of you who are new, body recomp is lose fat, gain muscle, like change the composition of your body. Body recomposition has been demonstrated under hypocaloric conditions, being in a deficit. You can body recomp in a deficit. That's what it's saying. Therefore, body recomposition seems to be more complex than energy balance alone. What is energy balance? Calories in, calories out. Okay. So it's saying you can still body recomp in a deficit because it's more complex than simply calories in, calories out, which again is age old research, you guys. How, so because hypertrophy, muscle growth, is an energy demanding process, more energy is needed, which is why we say when you eat more, it's a more efficient process to grow muscle mass, right? Because you have more food, more energy to put to build, essentially. However, this energy, you guys, this is so cool. This energy supply to build muscle in a deficit can come from fat and glycogen stores, how do you fill your glycogen stores? You eat a bunch of carbohydrate. What? <laughs> the same stuff that all of us who build physiques have been saying for so many years and or macros. Okay. So you can build it through your, your current fat mass, glycogen stores, and eating macros from your diet. You, oops. You guys. Any questions that come up, let me know. If I don't have the answer, I will dig into the research and I'll find it because it helps me grow and learn too. So like, I'll do this for you literally anytime for the rest of my life. I'm not joking. Okay, cool. All right. Great, 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 great. So I highlighted the word conflicting because in this field, I was going to say industry, again, research is constantly advancing. More research is consistently being done. Naturally, things are going to be conflicting. And so I found the bulk of what everyone is agreeing with. You know, I looked at what were the methodologies? What were the results? Who was the group being tested? This is so key because some people are looking at only people who weigh over 300 pounds. Okay. Their protein levels and their body recomp strategies are going to be different than the general public, I could say, right? Granted, I'm assuming the general public is less than 200 pounds, I think they are. And so it's so vital to know who is the audience the research study A is studying and who are they speaking to, okay? Okay, great. So other, so let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah. So um, with some studies indicating positive increase in fat-free mass. Okay. In contrast, other studies have reported no additional benefit of higher protein diet on this outcome, which is increasing fat-free mass, increasing muscles. Let me repeat that. Studies have reported no additional benefit of higher protein on building muscle mass. The conflicting results are challenging to explain, and some of it is the methodologies. What's the process? Okay. Now, the moderate protein and the high protein groups showed similar outcomes. It is conceivable that the differences in daily protein intake between moderate and high protein was insufficient to promote a significant difference in muscular adaptations. This has been consistent across many, many studies I was researching. The high protein group averaged just 1.4 grams of kilos, uh, sorry, grams of protein per kilogram body mass per day, uh, whereas evidence indicates that gains in skeletal muscle mass are maximized with the consumption equal to or greater than 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram body mass. 1.6, ladies. 1.6. Okay. Let me keep going. This is a different study. I wanted to include this study. This one might not be relevant to all of you, but this is relevant to a lot of you. So the underappreciated role of low muscle mass in the management of malnutrition. All of you all eating 1,200 calories a day are malnourished. 
you are absolutely malnourished. And so this one is really talking to you. And so this study was talking about these people who are not eating enough, who are not getting enough calories, how can we help them gain muscle mass? The recommendations are higher for older adults with at least one to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram body mass or body weight. They're higher for older adults. And this one is still saying one to 1.5. Just as a reminder, for those of you who are just tuning in, one gram of protein per pound of body weight is 2.2 grams. The research is showing we don't need that much. The research, this one is showing for older adults, one to 1.5. Um, the other study was showing 1.6. I, I, well, let's go back here. So 1.4 to 2.0. This is the same study as this one. So 1.4 to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram body mass with maximized muscle gain at uh, equal to or greater than 1.6. So it's safe to say 1.6 to 2.0. Let's go to a third study. This is from um, the Strength and Conditioning Journal. Protein distribution, recommendations, and practical applications for elite athletes and active adults. So I did three different studies, right? Active adults is a lot of you guys. You are weightlifting. You are putting in the work. You are getting in your steps. Um, this one, again, was for women eating 1,200 calories, probably doing cardio, beach body, Caroline Gerving, that type of stuff. This is just what I've seen. I'm not trying to categorize everybody. This is just what I've seen. And this one, I would say, is more for like uh, postmenopausal. Yeah. So I tried to hit really where all of you guys, for the most part, would hit. Okay. I think a lot of us are here. This is where I am, an active adult. None of us are elite athletes. Okay. Well, few and far between, maybe, in here. Okay. In general, to optimize muscle protein synthesis, and I'm going to take a pause, and I'm going to explain what is muscle protein synthesis protein synthesis. This is typically your body building muscle mass. It's the essentially chemical process of your body building muscle mass. However, your uh, the muscle protein synthesis, the building has to exceed muscle breakdown. When does muscle breakdown happen? When we train, when we lift weights. I really wanted to add this in here, this little blurb on the side, right? Uh, it's essentially the process of the bodybuilding muscle as long as it exceeds muscle breakdown. If you are overtraining, if you are lifting weights five days a week, you're doing cardio and running five days a week, you're doing HIIT training, you're doing all these things. I actually had to have a sit down with a client the other day because I was like, I love your work ethic. I love how much you're putting in, but you're hindering your results by training so much because your breakdown is higher than your muscle protein synthesis, than your build or your repair. So you're actually losing muscle mass. It is not wise to overtrain. It is not wise. So let me bring this back up. Let me get this on the whole screen. Got it, guys? Okay. So in general, to optimize muscle growth, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends a total daily intake of 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram body mass, depending on the training intensity. Elite athletes would be encouraged to hear closer to the 2.0, but for everybody else, personally, I would say 1.6 to 2.0. I like to personally go there, like I keep saying, but research after research after research after research I'm seeing is about 1.2 to 2.0, and some research studies are even lower. Wild, right? What do you guys think about this? Tell me your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love this question. Yeah, let's talk about questions. This is such a good question. How do you pinpoint exactly how much you need between 1.6 and 2 grams? Yeah, lifting four days a week, losing fat and gaining muscle. Great question. Now, as I always say, this totally depends on the woman. So I'm just going to explain to you what I've seen from other women and just personally what I recommend. Um, remembering that every trainer is different and this is my philosophy, but I always always to the best of my ability align with current research because otherwise what are you doing right so i think between 1.6 and 2 grams is a perfectly safe personal preference okay now i have one gal that i'm thinking of really uh specifically she so we are right at about maintenance right now and i kind of have her teetering well we're about to go into intuitive eating so she, she's 
incredible body and she's completely where she wants to be. Now she's just maintaining it. For her, I had her at 1.8. I had her uh, carbs, I think it was like 296 grams of carbohydrate because she lifts weights and she wants to build muscle. We do basically no cardio, very little to no cardio because she wants to grow muscle mass. Um, and she told me, she said, man, I'm just craving protein. You know, it's a lot of carbohydrate and I'm just really craving protein. I'm like, no problem. Let's bring your carbohydrate down a little bit and let's increase your protein a little bit because her body was saying, I want a little bit more protein. She's a vegetarian. In my diet, I want a little bit more protein. I'm like, no problem. Now, I am a lifestyle trainer. If I was training her for competition, I would say, no, we need all of that for uh, carbohydrate to just rapidly build your muscle mass most efficiently, right? Um, so I would say it's totally up to you. I personally do 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram body mass. Again, I like to have a lot of my uh, uh, ma uh, macros and carbohydrate or sorry, calories and carbohydrate. But I also personally do like, I think right now I'm at like 1.1 grams of fat per kilogram body mass, which is also really high. But you may have heard me say before, I'm not really interested in gaining muscle mass. I really love my body. I, I don't want to be huge, right? I like to just be fit and feminine how I am. And personally, I like to eat more fat. My body feels good when I eat more fat, especially around my cycle. And so I'm still in the healthy range. For fat, it's 0.5 to 2 grams of fat per kilogram body mass. That's a huge range. And so it really just depends what works for you. So I would say, I apologize, I can't see your name. It's just because I'm using StreamYard. They they have like, um, not security, like uh, they're protecting your identity unless you want to share it, basically. Um, I would love to use your name, but I'll know after. But what I would recommend is start with 1.8 grams of protein. See how you feel. Just see how you feel. If your energy is going up, you're feeling amazing, everything is working great, don't change it, right? Mess with your carbon fat. But if you're eating 1.8 grams and you can just tell you're just craving protein, increase it to two grams for sure. Listen to your body because although research is incredible and it gives us so much information, every single woman is so unique. And so listen to your body with the research right next to it, okay? Does that help? Does that give you a clear path or do you have more questions? Because I want to make sure you leave with this like, okay, I got it. I don't want you to have any lingering questions. So please ask if you have more. Here's another question. I know, honestly, my mind was blown. The first time I did this research, I was like, because I was going up to 2.4 grams of protein. And I did this research, I think it was like, I think it must have been like eight months ago. And I was like, what? I went into my clients. I dropped so many grams of protein. I was like, you guys, we are not doing this anymore. We're going to start pumping it more towards carbs. Granted, I haven't seen a massive change in physique. Well, actually, that's not true. That is actually not true. Although the clients I've had the past year, their compliance is also significantly higher. And so I think um, that could be why as well. Um, but it's great. And also it helps women's quality of life because then you have so much more play in your carbon fat, having plenty of uh, protein in your diet, having tons of carbs. So you're just increasing muscle mass a ton, but also your quality of life is higher because you have a lot more carbon fat to play with, which is really cool. Oh, good question. My mind is blown. I'm at 155 grams of protein. Yeah. And you weigh 150 grams. Do I adjust overnight or do I lower protein less? A little at a time. I personally always recommend slow and steady, um, especially if you increase carb. Now, I, I definitely want to talk to you guys about this. Um, I'm going to tangent from you just for a minute and I'll come back. So I tend to see this does vary with women. Actually, I have one gal, I think I increased her by like maybe 22 grams of carb and she, I could, she is feeling the bloat. And usually that happens at about 30 or higher, but for some reason, women, they're a little more sensitive. So when you lower, the reason I'm saying this is when you lower fat or uh, sorry, sorry, when you lower protein, you have more space for carbon fat, right? However, when you increase carbohydrate, typically you'll increase water retention. And so you'll feel fluffy and bloated, but then a lot of people will be like, it's carbs. I'm allergic to carbs or gluten or this or that oh my gosh, my body is not responding. I need to slash my carbs. That's not it. 
You just need to allow your body time to adjust two to three weeks, sometimes more. I find that women typically it takes two to three weeks and then their body's like, oh, I get it now. And then they like tighten up and their body starts to use all that carbohydrate for building muscle mass. It's really beautiful. So 10 out of 10 recommend nice and slow. I always play on the safe side. Um, so I can actually do a calculation for you. Now, again, this is having a little bit of information. This isn't having like a ton of information about you. So I'm going to give you a recommendation, um, but it may need adjusting. Okay. So how do you know your kilos, right? So let me pull this back up really quick. So uh, 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilo body mass. Okay. So you weigh 155 divided by 2.2. This is going to give you your kilos. Okay. So you weigh 70.45 kilograms. So let's say 70.5. So I'm going to say, I'm going to stick with the 1.6 to 2.0. And honestly, I'm going to stick with the 1.8. So 70.5 kilos times 1.8. That's 127 grams of protein. So that is, oh, oh, that's beautiful. You could act. Can you tell me how much, how many times you lift weights? Is this the same, is this the same person or a different person? This person, again, I'm sorry, I can't see your name. Can you please tell me how many days a week do you lift weights? And do you know on average how many steps do you take? Because in, I need to know a little bit more about your activity to tell you if you can make this exact flop. Sweet, Erin, thank you. You train four days a week. Um, lifting or you do hit or tell me a little bit more. Now, traditional weightlifting, like physique building, or do you do like Beachbody, Caroline Gervin, or do you do HIT? Like, give me a little bit more specific. Very active lifting, mild cardio. Yeah, I would say make the immediate switch. Um, it's only 28 grams. And so I would drop your protein 28 grams, and I would increase your carbohydrate 28 grams. Give your body time to adjust. Traditional, oh, easy switch. Erin. Let me know how your lifts change. If you notice more energy in your training sessions, if you notice that you're able to increase weight faster, like increase weight in the gym faster, I can almost guarantee that you will if you're compliant. And I'd be really curious to hear what you have to say. So please share this. Please share with me after you do this. So yeah, just like I said, I would drop your protein by 28 grams. Go ahead and do this immediately. Start today or tomorrow. Increase your carbohydrate by 28 grams. Keep everything else the same. And just monitor how your body feels. Just as a reminder, because I'm not sure exactly how long you've been watching this. Just as a reminder, you may feel a little blow, a little puffiness for a week or two, maybe three, but probably with what it sounds like, probably just two weeks. Track your measurements. I'm going to give a quick, actually, well, I, let me give a quick uh, explanation or uh, example. I have a client, quite compliant. Um, she, so last week we, let's see, I think it was April 25th. Yeah. So a week ago, we, I increased her macros. Um, I think it was by like 25 or 30 grand or I, excuse me, I increased her carbohydrate, um, by 25 to 30 grams. And she did her check-in on Sunday. She was up two pounds, but every single measurement dropped her waist, low belly, hips, upper thigh and mid thigh, every single one dropped by 0.5 centimeter, which is huge. I like to see a 0.5 centimeter drop in two of those categories per week. And I'm like, bang on, you were on the right track. You are seeing results. So all of her measurements drop. She's tighter all the way around, but her weight came up two pounds and she's like, WTF, this sucks. I'm like, I totally hear you. Wait another week. Let's see where you're at. So if that happens, no fear. And in reality, I would say uh, tomorrow morning before you eat, before you drink, after the bathroom, take your measurements. I'll show you really quick. I have a video exactly how to take your measurements if you're curious. So waist, the smallest part of your waist. Your low belly, the largest part of your low belly, your hips, the largest part of your glutes, and then the largest part of your thigh, which you can't even see my thigh, the largest part of your thigh about here, and then the smallest, not the smallest, but right about the mid thigh, okay? And then take these measurements again in a week, but remember first thing in the morning, not after you eat, because after we eat, we get all bloated, right? It's not fat. It's just something that you ate.
Good question. I'm excited to see the changes in your body. <laughs> That's so fabulous. Cool, you guys. What other questions do you have? Yeah, love it, Erin. For sure. That's awesome. Cool. You guys, any other questions? This is huge, right? For a lot of you, because a lot of you have been told one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Research clearly shows so different. Okay, I'm going to post these for you guys. Um, feel free to take them. You can look up the um, research articles. Again, I can't say enough. Make sure it's peer reviewed. Um, please ask all the questions. And again, if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer. We will. I'll dig into the research. We'll have a conversation about it. And we'll talk through it. I love your guys' desire to learn. It's wonderful. I have that desire too. And it's so nice to go back and forth. So nice. Okay. All right, you guys have a great day. And um, if you're watching on the replay, if you have questions later, post them and uh, we'll, I'll go in and we'll talk about it. Feel free to send me a DM and we'll talk as well. Um, I'm always here to support you as best I can. All right. Have a great day, guys.